Jimmy Havoc for almost three years. Why didn't I leave sooner? So many reasons. He would routinely try to self-harm in front of me when we fought, which was often. I had to fight scissors and blades out of his hands on more than one occasion. I tried to call ambulances for him, and he would snatch my phone out of my hands. Every other week, I would receive a fresh threat of suicide. He would sit next to me and refuse to speak to me and refuse to even look at me for hours as I cried and I screamed and I begged him. He told me he would take part in the tournament of death and kill himself there. And if I tried to go in and save them, he'd tell the door to not let me in. The first time I left was after SmackDown at the O2. He was drunk and verbally abusive. I told him that I'd, he'd also upset my friend, and he stormed over to her, grabbed her by the arm, got up in her face to apologize. She was afraid. AEW has announced that he's receiving treatment and counseling for mental health and substance abuse challenges. Havoc's status within the company will be addressed once he completes rehab. Uh, AEW tweeted, We wish Jimmy Havoc all the best as he receives treatment and counseling. In an effort to overcome the mental health and substance abuse challenges in his life. All Elite Wrestling, yeah. We are aware of various reports related to Jimmy. We are valuing his status with our company. We will address it when he has successfully completed his rehabilitation. <coughs> oh, a lot to digest there. There's, An awful there's, lot. Another, there's another tweet, uh, another, another woman who came out about Jimmy Havoc, too. Uh, she was younger, a fan... She had been invited to a wrestler's after party with Jimmy Havoc. She didn't know what she was getting into, but she went anyway. They drank for hours until the next morning uh, when they were going. She walked him back to his hotel room. He invited her in. She was pretty pretty hungover, you know, sobering up from it, but she wanted, she just felt like sleeping in a bed would be better than trying to go all the way back to wherever she was. Um, right. And he he had talked to her about issues in his relationship that he was in, and then he asked if he could stick his dick in her. And she she denied it, but she stayed, and he ended up having sex with her. And the next morning, she was woken up to him slamming his head on the hotel room door multiple times, obviously regretful for what he had done, knowing that he was fucking his own life up and, and probably hers. And he tried to apologize she had spoken out to the promotion who said that they would no longer have him on their shows, but then a year later had him on another one of their shows. She said she's more upset with the promotion than she is with Jimmy Havoc, but that's another side of the story that came out, and I'm pretty sure I got that pretty down to the mark. No, I, I actually read that too when you were talking about how she was uh, more pissed at the promotion and everything. I think it's... Uh... To me, this one, this one is so sick to me because it seems so purposely manipulative. Mm -hmm. We all know Jimmy Havoc's wrestling style, okay? He's a very hardcore, you know, anything goes wrestler. You got blades, you got barbed wire, you got fire, you got anything you want, tax. And he's going to sit there and, and quote unquote self-harm himself in front of these women to get what he wants. That pain means nothing. To, that is just a tactic to get what you want. If that, yeah. if that's, if that's legitimately what he's doing, yeah, like that's nothing. I don't buy that for a second. That's just me, and it's sad because I, I, I'm a huge Jimmy Havoc fan. Yeah, a uh, huge Jimmy Havoc fan. But he has a that, lot of mental health issues, though, too, and so he does. And and he's been open about that. This isn't the first we've heard about that. Yeah. Um, but. Um, as somebody who knows a lot about mental health issues and everything like that, it it doesn't okay doing no. negative things yeah. to other people. Using it as a weapon against other people to to reign power over them is not good. Yeah, you might you might need help just as much as somebody who is a drunk driver and mm -hmm. accidentally, or somebody who's an alcoholic, drinks and drives and kills somebody. They, they might be better off in rehab than in prison. I'll be the first yeah. to say that. So maybe Jimmy Havoc does need. Uh, psychological help over anything else, but it doesn't okay what happened either. Um, moving right along to another of uh, wrestlers that one of my favorite wrestlers, but 
Kind of I'm makes gonna, sense, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to yeah. I was gonna say I'm gonna go to hell for saying this, but come on, folks. <laughs> Twitter user Corrine Mink posted a note recalling an incident with King of Dong style Joey Ryan. Uh, Mink had gone to pick up Ryan from the airport, and on the way back she said that she had been molested by Ryan. Quote, hey, y'all. Don't start a molestation (laughs) story with hey, y'all. Honestly, that is... I mean, everybody should be taken seriously, but you just shouldn't start a, a molestation story with "Hey y'all." But we're gonna we're just gonna read it verbatim. Hey y'all, one time I was picking up Joey Ryan from the airport, and he like groped my thigh and chest while I was driving. Tried to get me to go to his hotel room, and then kissed me to convince me to do so. Mink then confided in the promoter in charge of WrestlePro, who offered their support by apologizing and promising, "We've heard this before. They will yeah. never book the King of Sleaze again." However, the promotion ended up booking Ryan on their show a year and a half later. Um, this one again, not as much detail. Um, a- a- any kind There's of molest- a lot of people who hate Joey wrong. Ryan just for his gimmick. Right, this could right. be any of those people. But if Joey Ryan was a molester, it wouldn't surprise me in the least. Uh, I agree. I don't like. I mean, it's, it, this, this, it's probably just her. I mean, this is just her talking, but I have a hard time starting it with, hey, y'all. Yeah. And then when she's like, and he, like, groped me. Like, I don't know. I guess I, it's a, it's a yeah, it's a generation thing or something. Um, but definitely, again, not okay. Not okay. Don't, don't grab women while they're driving. That's not only rude and, and, and sick, but it's a danger to everybody on the road. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then again, promoters, the gaslighting, uh, the gaslighting in, in wrestling again has been going on forever. You hear about uh, back in the day. I mean, you talk about sixties, seventies, eighties, even into the nineties. Whenever anybody talked about Memphis wrestling, the first thing people talked about before Jerry Lawler or the Jarrett's or uh, Junkyard Dog or any of the stuff back there. They talked about guys fucking underage girls because Memphis wrestling was just known for the place where you go to fuck underage girls. And it was okay. Everybody allowed it to happen. Everybody covered it up. The gaslighting is the... The gaslighting... The the wrestling business is the biggest problem here. Yeah. Um, We can move on. I'm sorry because we aren't even at the end here. I'm already already on my soapbox. Ah. Mikey Whipwreck and the women's promotion Fierce Females would no longer be associated with one another. The allegations against Whiplash at first surfaced on social media early in the day on 618, which was yesterday, and they addressed multiple concerns about the UK promoter. It's hard for all of us to watch Fierce Females at all women's promotion. Talk about it being a safe place for fans and wrestling alike. When many of us have felt decidedly unsafe in the presence of its promoter, Mikey Whiplash. Our experiences all differ in severity, but there is a pattern of mental abuse and manipulation that all of us recognize. Sending un- unsolicited messages to female trainees and workers, making unwanted sexual advances, both by massage or by message and in person. <laughs> by, by massage isn't okay either, let's just be honest. <laughs> Emotionally manipulating gaslighting female workers, and even becoming physically violent with a number of women. Many of us have been bullied and belittled, feeling like we were walking on eggshells at a show because we didn't dare make him angry. Some might ask why we continue to stay silent about this and why we continued to work for the company. Many of us have been afraid to say anything, afraid that we wouldn't be believed, that our bookings would be taken from us, or that we'd be blacklisted from companies. The boys protecting the boys mentality stopped us from feeling that we had a voice. Even now, with so many women coming forward to talk about their experiences, we are still terrified of the consequences. That is the influence of these experiences. It is uncomfortable. And there will still be those who don't believe us. That is your choice. Yeah, that's that's the problem, is there's still people that... The worst thing is going to happen is that 
one or two or even maybe, you know, seven or eight of these are going to come out as either fake or over-exaggerated or, or just not enough evidence to prove they're real. And everybody's going to look at all of them and say they're all making it up or just, just go with it, you know? Yeah. I saw I saw a post in a fucking wrestling group today that just said, that's life, get over it. That's not life. Being no. raped is not life. No. I want some. you know what? I'll go over there and rape him. That's, 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 just, I want when to I'm say done, I'll be like, like that. that's life. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Go, go over to the bathroom sink and run some water over your asshole. That's life. Uh-huh. It's... Uh. People are ugly, it's, man. 2020 is the year of exposing ugly, ugly people. And boy, if it wasn't totally wrong to just round them up, put them on an island and nuke the shit out of it. Yeah, because, uh, you know, you talk so much about the Black Lives Matter, which is which is 100% true. And if you've never been in that position, you can't understand it. And yeah. as I've said in the past, I grew up native on a reservation and in a racist area, and I understand a lot of it. Um, this is something I, I just cannot, I don't know what it's like to be an inferior sex. And that's, that's not saying women are an inferior sex, but you read these, that's how all of these are being treated. And that's how they're being told to behave as if it it doesn't matter. Listen to the men, do what the men say, shut your mouth. It's okay. I know you're not comfortable with it, but it's okay. And it's just... And people, after all of this comes out, you can read all of these. Pacey, you and I are going to read all of these. We're not even done yet. Oh, my gosh, there's still multiple more yet. <laughs> yeah, just just over halfway. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, the, the thing is, there's going to be people listening to this who are going to walk away saying, meh, you know, they're, they're, they're not going to give a shit. And <sighs> that's what hurts. Well, their voices need to be heard. And I think I think us, you know, restating their statements is a good way to help people hear it who may not have heard it. And and if they don't like it and they walk away from us and never listen to another Beef Sticks podcast again, so fucking be it. Bye. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> it's all about Karen now. Bye, Karen. <laughs> God, when she's when that when that native woman slapped that Karen yeah. bitch for telling her to go back to her, <laughs> that was the best shit ever. God, I I popped and marked for that. God damn. Um. Okay, we're still moving though. Um, this is a big one here. The next two are pretty big, to be honest. Liz Savage has. Liz Savage says that the NWA vice president Dave Lagana sexually assaulted her. She tweeted a lengthy tweet describing him manipulating her to move to California, stay at his place to get wrestling gigs, and then molesting her while she slept. This one is really creepy. Yeah. So it goes, quote, I woke up in the middle of the night, and he had his hand down the front of my pants, underneath my underwear. He was also touching himself. I was scared. This this sentence right here, Pasty, is is what really, like I just said, where it's like you, you never know how these women feel. I can never know how these women feel. So after she woke up and he has his hand in her underwear on her vagina and he's jacking off, she says, I froze for a moment and pretended I was asleep. That's how fucked up this world is, where yeah. her first thought is to just play pretend dead. like you're asleep. Yeah, play dead. Yeah, fuck. That's disturbing. She continues, then I tossed hard and pulled away, hoping that he'd leave me alone. He did. Then he kicked me out that week with less than a week's notice. Now, due to this allegation, NWA released an official statement saying, Pursuant to allegations made by pro wrestler Liz Savage on her Twitter account on 6-18-2020, NWA Vice President David Lagana has resigned his post effective immediately. Here's the big one, though. As well as all production of NWA content is temporarily halted pending a restructuring of executive management positions. Now, first of all, I think it's awesome that they're literally shutting down the company and it sounds like to make sure that they're venting 
everybody mm-hmm. and seeing who's, you know, Yeah, NWA kind of seems like a hotbed.